If you have a parenting 911 emergency family physician and parenting expert, Dr. G, well, she is here to the rescue and she joins us now. And we're gonna start with this all too common question from Lisette in our audience. What's your mom emergency? Hi, I'm Lisette. I have a three and a half year old and an 11 month old and one on the way. <laughs> wow. um, thank Congrats. you. So, Samir is my three and a half year old, our oldest. He's always been a leader since day one of preschool, kids club, you name it. He was the leader, the rock star, and suddenly I've seen a new side of him. He cries when we drop him off at school, meltdowns at his kids club, doesn't want to go anywhere. And when we pick him up, he scopes my car for cups and to go trays. Mom, did you go somewhere without me in Milan? I said, oh no, I got caught. So then he has another meltdown until we take him back out and make him feel like he's part of the group. So my question is, what do I do and how do I address it? I know he's not being hurt at school or at his kids club, but I really wanna make sure I'm doing the right thing. So this is totally normal. A lot of kids, somewhere around two or three years old, who've been rock stars at getting dropped off, have been like, see you later, or you mm -hmm. come and they're like, why are you here already? All of a sudden, yeah. they don't want you to go. And it's actually their sense of their own autonomy. Like, oh, I'm starting to be able to make more things happen that I want in my world. I, I don't want you to leave. Also, a lot of kids that age genuinely believe that you drop them off, sit in your car until it's time to pick them up and come in. They don't realize <laughs> that you have your own life that you're going to. And it can be easy. I don't know if you feel this. I feared it as a mom of four boys that like, if they cried, did that mean they weren't a leader and that kids were gonna look down on them? Did yeah. it make them a mama's boy? And did you worry about that? I, I did, yes, of course. And, and I just want to reassure you that that is absolutely not what okay, happens. Okay, good. He needs to know that you can take whatever emotion he has to express. Okay. And just like we know that babies in the first six months, if when they cry, you just go and pick them up, they end up as, with a stronger foundation and easier attachment, that kids end up separating more easily as they get older if you can hear they're upset. Right? Like, yeah, that bothered you. I understand that it frustrates you that we do actually do other stuff when we're not here. Yes. I know you don't say you want to be here right now. That's all totally normal. Okay. And the more you can accept his emotions without allowing him bad behaviors, he doesn't get to hit, he doesn't get to throw toys when he gets there because he's angry, but that you can accept his emotions, the stronger he will be and the better a leader he will be. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. I mean, is the crying part of it okay? Crying is absolutely okay, but you can make it easier actually too. You can make it easier on yourself and easier on him if you have a strategy. You need a drop off strategy and, and you can absolutely just say, hey, what's, he can have a role in that. You can say, what do you wanna do first? He puts his stuff in his cubby. Maybe he shows you one thing he's gonna do that day that he's excited about. Two hugs, a kiss, and you're out. Okay. Right, and you do the same thing every time. What's wrong yes. with being a mama's boy? Uh, <laughs> asking for a friend. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Okay. And I'm hoping my boys are watching. But, <laughs> but the thing is, what we worry about as moms is are we giving our kids the strength they need to handle it on the playground and to handle it on the field and to be who they need to be? And we used to feel that allowing them to express emotion was setting them up later for failure, and we now we know the opposite. Okay. They can express their emotion. That builds resilience as long as they then move towards some kind of action plan, and that's our job is to help them with that. And be confident as you leave. You do hear his emotion. Yeah. I know you're gonna have fun with Ms. So-and-so today, and I will be back. And then every time you leave and come back, you're building his confidence. Are there any indicators that there's some type of separation anxiety that has gone too far? So separation anxiety, Lizette asked the right question. She said, I, I know, already know he's not being hurt at school. Mm -hmm. I already know that it's not a sudden fear. Mm -hmm. And often you can sense in your kids the difference between sadness anger, frustration, a little bit of why aren't I the boss today, and fear, please don't leave me with these people. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying a three-year-old's never learned to pull that, yeah. but that does make you wanna look twice, ask around, can, you know, is there a particular teacher that you're comfortable with, ask really good questions. To, to make mm -hmm. sure that there isn't an yeah. underlying cause. Right, that something didn't all of a sudden That's causing happen. anxiety. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. because sometimes kids that age can't say, but if I stay, that kid's gonna keep poking me with a pencil. <laughs> right. Yeah. Always full of great advice. Thank if you, you want Dr. G to weigh in on your parenting 911 emergency, please visit thedoctorstv.com and just submit your question.